Got a couple of Sony ICF 7600 shortwave radios in to evaluate. Now, I don't know whether the guy wants to actually put a lot of money into these or not, but I'm going to take a look at them and see what's the problem. I'm sure it's capacitors. In fact, I'm positive it's capacitors. Let's just see how bad these ones really are. I have an ICF SW7600. This is a long wave, medium wave, short wave, FM stereo, phase lock loop, synthesized receiver by Sony. And this one came in for me to take a look at it. Now, first thing I've noticed, I got two of these in from the same person. This one has the screws missing from the cabinet. On the back, we have our medium wave channel step switch. I don't know anything about this unit other than the fact that it came in with no screws. So we're going to power it up. This uses a negative tip power adapter, which was something that Sony was very good at doing. And what a lot of people did is they went and bought a regular adapter and they didn't check the polarity and plugged it in and blew things up. I have a Sony adapter from my own ICF 2010. I think it's from what mine's from. I've got an ICF 2010 kicking around somewhere. So I'll plug my adapter in and see whether this thing actually even works. So frequency time comes on right away. So the, it lights up. That's a good sign. I don't know if it, anything else about it. So let's try turning it on. And it's on. And I don't hear any sound. So let's try tuning in. Oh, how do I do this? AM. AM 1440 execute. So that is the frequency of my little test transmitter. And I hear no sound on this unit whatsoever. Don't see any indication that it's tuned either. Try the band selector here. Select uh, FM. Okay, tuning indicator lights up for that, but no sound. I'm just listening to see if I hear any noises when I flick switches and stuff. Nothing there. We'll plug some headphones in. Here if I hear any noise out the headphones. It's all a process of elimination on these units. Got to determine whether you've got a fault in the speaker or a fault in the amplifier stage, but I still hear nothing. Through the headphones, therefore, we can now pop this unit apart. Oh, I heard a click. Listen. I see an indicator that the amplifier is actually trying to do something. It's amplifying and the speaker is working. So let's just pop the back off this one. As I say, there's no screws in here because somebody has obviously been into this one. And uh, we'll see if we can get this one to run. So, because I know someone has been into it before, I have to do a visual inspection first just to see whether there's anything obvious, any damage that they may have caused. As I say, no screws were in this unit when it came in. This is caution. Flex cable is connected. That's the warn people to not rip this thing apart because um, you could uh, damage something in it. We'll apply power again and try to localize where we have lost our signal. So power, we'll turn it on and we'll subject it to the wet finger treatment. See if we hear anything from the amplifier. Okay, this is probably the amplifier here. And I do hear some noise. So I've got my audio source going through a capacitor ground one side and we'll just try
wait a minute, make sure this is turned on. It help if I leave it turned on. Okay, I heard some sound there. Oh. Well, that's weird. This thing just started producing some sound. And the sound that it was producing was actually from the radio, not what I was injecting. chassis might just lift out there we go all right take that off I believe I gotta disconnect the ribbon cable from this other side because it is really really short and that's why there's that caution there's a caution on there saying you got to disconnect this ribbon cable. Don't try to pull it through. You got to disconnect this first. So let's just disconnect this ribbon cable. Looks like somebody's already damaged this because someone's tried to repair it already on one side. That might be what's wrong with this radio. As the ribbon is damaged. But let's just undo it correctly and lift out, lift off this board. Unplug it. As you can see, someone has uh, damaged this board in the past. Is well, there's a trace. It looks like it's severed over here, but someone's repaired that one. So someone tried to pull this apart before and uh, damaged that ribbon. Okay, now the board comes apart. Good chance that our, our failure on this one is these capacitors down here. The, these are in the audio output stage and that's a very good chance that this is where the fault on this radio is. I don't know if that trace is damaged. This one here certainly was damaged before. You can see where someone's put a, a jumper wire over it. I don't know if the trace over here is damaged or not. It, it, it certainly looks like it could be. That should be easy enough to fix if, that's, if there's a problem there. Anyway, um, this is likely where the fault on this radio is. First of all, we got circuit glue down here on these caps, but it's got these ugly surface mounted caps that go bad on all these radios. I personally have a Sony ICF 2010 that I have not used in probably 20 years, and I guarantee that if I turn it on, mine's not going to work. And it just so happens that right where I was right where I was tickling the IC with audio and the sound started to come on, it was right on these pins here, right on this side here. Which just so happens that it's connected right to one of these caps. Let's take a look with the ESR meter. I'll just zoom the camera out a bit so that uh, you can read it because I got viewers that don't trust it when I read out the reading. If I read out what the meter shows and they can't see it, they think that I'm bullshitting them. Ninety-four? Yeah, that was bad. Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. 
as is that one. That one's open as well. I think we'll probably find that all these ones are bad. These are all bad. All these surface mounted are probably no good. Yeah, that one's also. See, these ones are all bad. So we know what needs to be done on this radio. These electrolytics have to be changed out. These other ones are probably okay. Yeah, that one's fine. Just these surface mounted ones have to be changed. And they're, they're probably all bad. Thing is, I don't know whether the guy that owns this wants to spend a lot of money on it, but I guess we'll find out. See if we can get this one running. Yeah, these ones are all, they're all, yeah, they're all going to be, I'm sure they're all going to be bad. But uh, the ones that are really bad are these ones down here. we get no sound passing through them at all. Yeah, they're all, they're all cooked. So we have to start changing some of these little caps out if I want this radio to work. Of course, my concern on this one is that this, this, this ribbon might be damaged on this side. Let's just see if there's continuity on this side. I'd hate to uh, go to all the effort of changing the parts only to find out that the ribbon cable is is no good. So let's just check the test this. Uh, let's see here. Let's put my probe across this and just measure on the other side here and see whether we've got continuity. Yeah, it looks like we do. Yeah, okay. So the ribbon is not damaged. It was damaged on this side, but as you can see, somebody's repaired that already. So let's uh, proceed to see if I can find some caps to put in here and see if we can make this radio somewhat work. So we'll start with these ones down here. Cut them out of the circuit. This one here was leaking. Part of the problem is just the height. You got to use some pretty low profile caps to fit in here because there's not a lot of room in a small radio like this. And that's why they went with these surface mounted caps to begin with, was for the, the size of them.
Right, I've changed out a few caps on here. Let's just see whether I've made any progress. Power cord. Let's see if this thing will play anything now. Power is on. Uh, where's our lock switch? Oh, it's locked. Gonna flip this up. Turn it on. AM. So we're making progress because I had a little bit of sound there. We'll change a few more. Okay, change a few more of the capacitors. You can hear that the FM is working now, about AM. Uh, let's see here, what frequencies. So the radio is now partially working. I think we have gonna have to change probably the majority of the caps. I've done all the major ones in the power supply. I've done uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight of them now, I guess. I've been changed out in the power supply, and it's starting to work. But there's still several more that uh, need to be done. I'm going to stop on this right now because I got to talk to the guy that owns this and just see how far he wants to go on these radios to get them to run because there's no point in putting a bunch of time into it only to have the guy tell me oh I don't want to spend the money so we know where we got to go on these and I've got another one identical to this too so I got to uh, get a hold of the guy that owns it but if you've got one of these radios um, you're going to have to change all these surface mounted caps there's, you know, that's, there's really no other solution to long-term reliability and be sure you make sure that that uh, you don't damage that flex cable removing it you got to take the face off it and remove this board first to uh, do that so I'm looking at this second ICF SW7600 again came from the same the same guy and it's the guy I got the, uh, the, the broken laser disc from that I worked on uh, last week the $10 laser disc player or was it 15 bucks? I forget what I paid for it. Anyway, um, he was asking 15. I paid him 10. That's the one. Anyway, um, he had me. He gave me a few things to take a look at for him. So this is the second one. Let's just see what happens with this one. So this one doesn't even turn on. It's completely dead. So let's pop the back off this one and see what is going on with this radio. I'm sure it's going to have capacitors that are bad in this one too, but this one's got a different fault. This one doesn't turn on at all. And this one has all the screws present. So I know this one no one's been into yet. Or so I thought. It was pretty obvious once I got the back off that someone has been into this one. So we'll take a quick look at this one. And then I can talk to him and see what he wants to do as far as 
servicing these. I've got a few other pieces that belong to him as well. Some stereo equipment and tape decks and stuff that we'll be looking at over the next couple of days to evaluate and see which uh, pieces are worth fixing and which ones are not. And oh, it looks to me like somebody's already been in this recapping this one. Look at the look at these caps. These have been changed on this one. So somebody has been in and worked on this one in the past. Let's just pop this board out and take a look underneath the uh, the main board here and see what uh, has been done to this one. Yeah, this one's had nah, these ones haven't been done on it. But a lot of these other ones have been. Lift up the the clip here and see. See this radio doesn't turn on at all, so we may have a totally different problem. We may have a problem in the uh, in the rate in the logic board on this one. So something interesting to try would be to try the logic board from the other radio and just see whether whether this one's working. Uh, it looks like someone's changed that cap, that cap. Oh, the trace is broken on this one. That trace is snapped right off. You can see here. Look at this. That one's that one's snapped off. That might be why it's not working. That one's okay, but that one there, that one is lifted, as you can see. It looks like it's still hanging on to something. Nope. So let's see where that trace went and repair it. Fortunately, I could see where it went, so I was able to tie it back down where it belongs. I'm just going to plug this other board in on this one and see whether this one works. And this trace over here actually looked like it was severed. Even though I measured the continuity, it certainly looked like it was damaged. So I've just uh, gone ahead and just put a little bridge across there. This one turns on. So this other radio here, this this board here has a problem, as it would not turn on. It could be the switch. We'll check that out and see if it's the switch. Will this receiver receive anything? So this one's got a problem as well, it won't receive. It's, it's other, there's going to be other capacitors bad in this as well. So it appears maybe it just was the... Maybe just the pin switch wasn't being activated because I put the, I put the original board back in this one and when I closed the lock switch and can turn it on. It's not receiving anything though, so so the control board's working. This this 
radio board needs to have some work on it. I'll try this control board on the other chassis and see how it if it performs any different. It should be the same. Unless one of these traces wasn't making a connection, that's all. Because the other one certainly has been repaired. So I'm just going to put these units together for now that I know kind of what I'm up against and get a hold of the guy that owns them and just to say, see what he wants to do. Maybe I'll dig up my ICF 2010 and we'll take a look at that one. And that'll be one that I'll definitely be fixing because it's mine. So, um, as far as these caps go, I don't care how many I've got to put into it, I'll do it because it's my radio. Okay, this one's back together. I'm going to pop the other one that had no screws in it. Maybe I'll put two screws from this one and put two screws in the other one just to hold the back on for now. But uh, I'm going to say close these ones off at this point because we know what needs to be done on both of these radios. They both need all those surface mounted caps replaced. This one, say someone already changed some of the ones in the in the, uh, the front end on this one, but they didn't do any of the ones in the power supply and the amplifier. So they have to be done as well. This radio should power up now. As you can hear, it's uh, not tuning anything. And that's going to be the caps in the DC to DC converter. And it doesn't receive anything on AM at all. Oh, it'll pick up my little signal. Okay, that's one, one back together. We'll get the other one back together and uh, call this one a day. Now we know what needs to be done. I don't think I need to bore you guys with reassembling the other one, so we'll close it off now. Thanks for watching.